Welcome to White Lecture Online. Here's part of that same question we had from our viewer that we did on the previous video. But here we have an area which is defined by the two curves y equals 1 over x and y equals 2 over x and the two lines x equals 1 and x equals 3. But instead of revolving that area around the x-axis, we're now going to revolve it around the y-axis. So how do we solve that? It's a little bit different. The small volume element that we get has a kind of a different shape and we have to be able to define it. So imagine what would happen if we were to slice it. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to slice it in such a way that the slice goes all the way around. We're going to slice out a small little hollow cylinder. And so what that looks like is as follows. We're going to slice it in this way, like this. We're going to revolve it all the way around. So that means we're going to slice it over here, like this. And so we end up with something that if we then slice it all the way around, that goes around like this, and around like this on the front side, and around like this, and like this on the bike side. So then when we pull that out and we draw it over here, it'll look like this. it looks like a hollow cylinder like this. The top part is like this. Then we come down this way and we draw it like that. So that's the hollow cylinder that we would end up with. This little thickness right here we'll call the dx and that will be the little thickness right here. So the thickness of the cylinder is a small little dx. It's infinitesimally thin. It's a very, very thin little segment. Uh, what about the height? Well, the height starts from y2 and goes down to y1. So the height here of the hollow cylinder is y2 minus y1. And how else can we define that? Well, we know that y2 is equal to 2 over x, so that's equal to 2 over x minus y1 is 1 over x, and 2 over x minus 1 over x, well, that's equal to 1 over x. So we can define the height as 1 over x. The thickness of that hollow cylinder is dx. What about the radius? The radius of that cylinder. Well, the radius of that cylinder is from the y-axis to the slice. So that would be this distance right here. That would be x. So the cylinder would be x. All right, the radius x. And of course, it would go from x equals 1 to x equals 3. So what we then have, we have all these concentric cylinders that stack all up from the inner radius to the outer radius. So we would integrate from inside to outside from x equals 1 to x equals 3. So it's all those little segments, all those little cylinders that would fit inside one another and slowly contain the entire volume. So how do we define dv? dv is equal to, well if you think about it this way, if you were to slice a cylinder and lay it flat, you end up with something that kind of looks like this. It would be like a rectangular volume. And the length of this would be equal to the circumference. So the length is equal to 2 pi times the radius, which in this case is x. And the width right here would be the height, and that would be 1 over x. And the thickness, the thickness like this, that would be equal to dx. So the dv would be equal to the circumference, which is the length, times 1 over x, which is the width. So we can probably put lines like this to give you an idea what we're talking about. So the circumference of this hollow cylinder is 2 pi x. The width of the cylinder is really the height right here. The width of this rectangle is really the height right there. And then the thickness dx. So we end up with 2 pi x times 1 over x times dx. So the dv is equal to, the x's cancel out, 2 pi dx. And now we're going to integrate from the inner to the outer cylinder. So that's what this looks like. So we could say that v is equal to the integral of dv, which is equal to the integral of 2 pi dx. And we're going to integrate from x equals 1 to x equals 3. And that's a really easy integral. So that would be equal to 2 pi x evaluated for 1 to 3. So this would be equal to 2 pi times plugging the upper limit, we get 3. Plugging the lower limit, we get 1. So this is equal to 2 pi times 2, or that's equal to 4 pi. So the volume of that would be equal to 
4 pi, which is twice the volume that we found on the previous video when we evolved the area around the x-axis. Now, let's say this was a test question and you're not sure you did this correctly. You kind of have this nagging doubt and you want to find out how to kind of verify that that might be even remotely correct, that you're kind of in the right ballpark. Well, we have some clever way of doing that. So in the next video, we're going to show you how to approximate that in a very different way to see if your answer doing it using the calculus is anywhere near the correct answer. So stay tuned, we'll show you how to do something like that. Just for this one or for the other one, Phil? Just for this one. Why not the other one? I guess we could. Just wondering. <laughs>